In the fall of 2018, a Mosaic and Initiative training course was carried out at the site of Volubilis in Morocco. Volubilis covers more than 17 centuries of history from the 2nd century BC until the end of the medieval period in the 15th century. The Roman period Volubilis experienced the development of several residential neighborhoods. One is located on this area, the northeast of the city, on both banks of the Decimanus Maximus. Among these houses, one was named the Rider. In the past, mosaics excavated on archaeological sites were normally conserved for the future by detaching them from their original lime mortar foundations and relaying them on a new bedding using concrete, a much stronger, more resistant material. Decades later, many mosaics detached and relayed on sites are in very poor condition due either to the corrosion and expansion of the concrete reinforcement elements, or to fractures resulting from ground movement below the rigid panel and environmental exposure above. While structural treatments can repair the damage to these mosaic panels, the long-term solution to their conservation is to remove the concrete backing and relay the mosaic back on a bedding of layers of lime mortar, similar to the original foundation. This six-week training worksite provided the technicians with the critically needed experience of carrying out all the various operations involved in addressing the increasingly common conservation problem of relayed mosaics on archaeological sites. The mosaic is first cleaned with water, and the different fragments or sections are separated, removing previous cement mortar infilling repairs. The mosaic is then faced with two layers of fabric and an adhesive. The sections are then separated and detached from their substrate. Each one is then turned face down and transported to the conservation laboratory. The cement backing layer to be removed is first cut with a disc saw, being careful to not touch the back of the tesseract.
The cement is then removed by hammer and chisel. And finally, a pneumatic chisel is then used to uncover the underside of the tesser. In order to check that the mosaic sections are properly aligned before mounting them permanently on mortar, it is necessary to carry out their temporary assembly using an easily reversible material such as clay. First, the clay layer is made less sticky and adherent with sand. After the application of the clay layer, the mosaic is turned again face up. The sections are placed in their proper positions, aligning the bands of the decoration to the grid drawn on the work surface. The first facing of the mosaic sections is removed, and a second facing of the entire mosaic is carried out, onto which the new sections will be cut and the reference lines are drawn in order to re reassemble the mosaic on site again. The mosaic is then cut into sections again, turned over, and the clay completely removed. In order to relay the mosaic in its original location again, the preparatory mortar layers are laid down, imitating the original construction technique. First, the statumen, a layer of stones bonded on their surface with lime mortar, is constructed. Above the statumen, a layer of coarse mortar, the rudus, is laid down. This is followed by a layer of lime mortar with finer aggregate, the nucleus, onto which the tessellatum will be relayed. A new layer of fine lime mortar is applied on the back of the mosaic sections and on the bedding layer and the sections are slid back into their position. Finally, the sections are tapped to ensure their correct position and adherence. When the mortars are dry, the facing layers are removed and the mosaic edges are protected.